Hi again, this is Al K0CN with another video featuring the Flex 6000 series transceiver. I'll be using my Flex 6500 in this video along with Smart SDR 1.6. For this video I thought I would cover some of the initial steps of putting the Flex 6000 series radio with Smart SDR on the air. I think Flex did an amazing job when they designed the Smart SDR software and the 6000 hardware, making this a very easy system to use. Those who think they have to be a computer whiz to operate this system need not worry. But with any new radio or software, there's a learning curve. Using a computer screen to control your radio turns out to be easy, but it is different from a box with knobs. It does take a few times using the software before you know exactly on the screen to look and where to find each control. I found reaching a comfort level operating this software came quickly and I soon became impressed with what this system does. So to operate the Flex Radio you have to install Smart SDR software on your computer. Next you have to connect your radio to that computer. There are a couple of ways to do this. First you can connect directly to the computer's RJ45 socket using a Cat5 cable that came with the radio. Secondly, you can connect directly to a router using another Cat5 cable and then from the router connect to your computer by local area network or Wi-Fi. Both methods work very well. The people at Flex Radio have made this process very easy. There was no configuring necessary. Next, you open Smart SDR on your computer followed by turning on your radio. By the way, the order of this first step is not important. Right away you should see the Flex Radio setup window. The radio will go through a calibration process and you'll hear some relays clicking, but after about 50 seconds, your Flex Radio will be ready and you should see the radio listed in the setup window. Use your mouse and click on the radio and then click on the connect button. Your Smart SDR interface should then appear on the computer screen. We're now ready to set up the radio for a session on the air. As I mentioned, there are several ways to accomplish this, but I'll use the band control on the upper left. I click on band and then choose 40. You'll hear several relays click and then see the window change. You should now see a 40 meter frequency on the flag and in the RX control box. If I want to operate single sideband on 7.2 MHz, I can drag the slice receiver to that frequency. Again, remembering this is just one way of changing frequency. Next, I'll set the mode. On the flag, I press the CW button. I see several choices where I select lower sideband, LSB. Next, I'll choose the bandwidth for my receiver. I like to use 2.7 or 2.9 kilohertz, but the choice is yours. Smaller bandwidths for a crowded band and wider for more fidelity. You'll notice the light blue column on your slice receiver will change width with each different bandwidth setting. Now that I'm on my desired frequency and mode, I'll set up my transmitter. First I'll go over to the upper right side of my window and check to see that I matched to the antenna. The frequency is clear so I'll tune up. I note first that the tune power slider is set to 10%. I can check this by hovering my pointer over the slider to see the setting. I can adjust this value from 0 to 100 but 10% should give me about 10 watts output and that's what I'll choose to use. When the tune button is pressed, the transmitter will transmit and I can read the power output on the RF power meter and the SWR on the SWR meter. These are located conveniently near the tune button. I see that the SWR is about 1.7. I could live with that or use the auto tuner to get a better match. I'll turn on the auto-tuner by pressing the ATU button. 
the auto tuner comes to life and I hear a number of clicks from relays in the tuner and when it stops I'll see the word success in the window above the ATU button. This means I have a tuning solution for this antenna. If I press the tune button again I see the SWR to the radio is about 1.2 to 1 which is an improvement from my first reading so I'll go with this. I intend to operate using 100 watts. I'll check the RF power slider and move it to the far right position of its travel. By hovering the mouse pointer over the slider, I see it set to 100%, or this will give me about 100 watts, the maximum power output for a flex radio. Next, I'll check the microphone settings. Depending on the microphone I'm using, I'll need to adjust the mic gain and processing level. I choose the microphone in the phone control box and look at the controls. When I transmit into a dummy load, I see the mic gain level and the compression level in the meters on the phone box. To adjust the mic gain, I move the mic slider so that my loudest speech does not cause the level to move into the red. When the level meter shows green or yellow, I'm okay. But when it goes to red, I risk distortion and splatter. I normally operate having the processor on and set to normal. I usually get nice conversational audio in this setting. If I use the DX or DX Plus settings on the compressor, I'll get increased talk power for DX work or for competing in a pileup, but in a RAG2, others may like the normal setting better. Okay, with that adjustment made, you're ready to safely operate on the air. Now there are a lot of features and controls we haven't touched on, but this will get you started and allow you to safely operate and explore this great radio system. Later we'll talk about profiles. Profiles are a great feature on Smart SDR software. So after you go through the setup process on your flex radio for a given band or mode, you can memorize these settings in a profile and use them again later with a simple click of a button. This feature makes setting up very easy. Well, that's it for now. I hope you find this simple example helpful, and I hope you have fun operating your new Flex radio. Good luck, and 73s from Al, and thanks for watching.